I've been developing recipes for the better part of seven years now. I've got a backlog of hundreds and hundreds of meal prep recipes, and I can say with supreme confidence that this firecracker beef and Brussels recipe is securely in my top five favorites. I've gotten a number of requests for more beef recipes from you guys, so I came up with this one, and let me tell you what, it's a real winner. Here's how you make it. To start off, you're gonna prepare your rice. You'll need three and three quarter cups or 563 grams of cooked rice. Depending on what type of rice you use, that's gonna be probably somewhere between one and two cups of dry rice. Wash it until the water runs clear and then throw it on the rice cooker to start. Don't short yourself, always err on the higher side. And if you have extra at the end, now you have an excuse to make fried rice. I prefer to use cow roast rice when I meal prep. It's a short to medium grain rice and I have never had a problem with it drying out in the fridge over the course of the week. Next up, you're gonna prepare all of your vegetables. So give them all a good wash and then take one pound or 454 grams of Brussels sprouts, cut off the stems and have them. A lot of the time with Brussels sprouts, you'll have the outer leaves that have some brown spots or dirt on them. I just peel those away and set them aside and then throw them away later. If you wanted to use frozen Brussels sprouts for this recipe, I don't think you would have a problem with that. I mean, they're Brussels sprouts. At their best, they're a three out of 10 anyway. I air fried the Brussels sprouts today to make things quicker, so place them all into a large bowl and then drizzle over one half of a tablespoon or eight grams of oil. Season with salt and pepper to your liking and then give the bowl a toss to mix everything together. Once it has all been coated, grab your air fryer basket and place the Brussels sprouts into the basket in a single layer. Now, if you don't have an air fryer, you can just bake these, spread them out on a sheet pan and follow the same instructions. We're gonna air fry these at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 Celsius for five to eight minutes. If you use the oven, it will probably take a bit longer. Next up, we're gonna finish cutting the rest of our vegetables. Take four stalks or 20 grams of green onions and cut the tops into a small dice. This is gonna be used for a garnish in the final dish. So if you don't wanna buy the green onions and don't really care for the garnish, just leave it out. After that, you can take one small or half of a medium sweet onion or 100 grams worth and cut that into a small dice. Next, cut two medium poblano peppers or 200 grams worth into a small dice. If you can't find poblano peppers where you live, a green pepper would be a fine substitute. The poblano peppers have a tad bit more heat than green peppers do, and they're cheaper, which is why I like to use them. Poblano peppers don't have a ton of heat, but if you cut the seeds out, they have almost nothing. So if you like the spiciness, you can leave it in. I cut them out this time. Lastly, cut one lime into wedges, cut each of those wedges in half. These little pieces are gonna be used to garnish the final dish. At some point around this time, if you used the air fryer, your Brussels sprouts would have finished. I was very surprised at how fast the air fryer cooked these. You can just set the basket aside until you're ready for it later. Next up, we're gonna cook our peppers, onions, and beef. Heat a large skillet over medium to medium high heat, and I've written this recipe to have one half of a tablespoon or eight grams of oil to play with. So add a bit of oil to that pan and pour in your onions and peppers. Add a bit more oil if necessary, and then add in one tablespoon or six grams of red pepper flakes. Off screen, I had a scale that I was monitoring how much oil I used, and eight grams was the final amount. Then you're gonna add one tablespoon or 15 grams of minced garlic to the center and allow this to cook down. While that's happening, you can prepare your beef and get it ready to add to the pan. Give your peppers and onions a light pinch of salt to encourage the water to come out, and you can also season your beef with salt and pepper at this point. Make room in the center of your pan by moving those peppers and onions out to the perimeter, and then add your beef in to allow it to brown. We're gonna use two pounds or 908 grams of 90-10 ground beef. Try to get as much contact between the beef and the hot pan as possible. Ideally, we would cook the beef and the peppers and onions separately as to not overcrowd the pan, but I'm going for speed and efficiency here, so giving up a little browning is okay with me. If you wanted to save a few calories from that oil we used earlier, you could cook the beef first and then cook the onions and the peppers and the fat that rendered off from the beef. While the beef is cooking, you should prepare your sauce. Mix together five tablespoons or 84 grams of honey, one fourth of a cup or 60 grams of Frank's bread hot sauce, one and one third tablespoon or 20 grams of apple cider vinegar, and mix that together to incorporate all of that honey. Next, you can add in one and one half tablespoons or 15 grams of cornstarch. It might not be a bad idea to mix this in a bit of water first to prevent any clumping, but as long as you keep stirring, it will get incorporated eventually. Around this time, your beef should be close to being finished. When it's about 90% of the way done, stir up that sauce again and pour it into the center of the pan. The last thing we need to add are the Brussels sprouts we cooked earlier, so you can pour those into the pan as well and give it all a good stir to make sure the sauce is completely covering all of the beef and the Brussels sprouts. If you find that your sauce is a little thick, there's no harm in adding a bit of water to the pan to help thin it out. Just start small because you can always add more, but you can't take it away. Give it a taste test to make sure the flavors are where you like them. You can always add more salt, pepper, or red pepper flakes if you need to. But now it's time to get things plated. This recipe makes five servings. So get out five meal prep containers and to each container add 3 fourths of a cup or 112 grams of cooked rice. Spread it out so it looks nice and then divide your beef and Brussels mixture evenly between the five containers. If you wanted to have the exact same amount in every container, you would need to weigh the total amount of your beef and Brussels mixture and divide that by five. Whatever that value is goes into each container. 
I just go scoop by scoop until it's all divided because I'm going to eat all these meals by the end of the week anyway, so it doesn't matter if one has slightly more than another. They're all close enough to being even anyway. You can top them with green onions and then one of those lime wedges that you cut up earlier, and we are finished. Start to finish, this one should only take you about 40 minutes to prep. Each meal has roughly 620 calories and 44 grams of protein. You can make this with virtually any kind of ground meat you like. Let's be real, beef is the best, but you could do chicken, turkey, or pork if you wanted to. I used 90-10 beef in this recipe to help keep the macros a bit more friendly. Now I know 90-10 beef tends to be more expensive than some of the fattier grinds. If you wanted to use one of those fattier grinds, you could, but I would scoop away some of that fat that gets rendered out just to keep things from being so rich. Once the meals have cooled down close to room temperature, you can throw the lid on them and move them into the fridge. These will keep for up to five days. To reheat, I pull one out of the fridge and move it over into a glass dish. These plastic meal prep containers are supposed to be BPA free and microwave safe, and they probably are, but if I'm at home, I don't have any problem moving it over to a glass dish, and there's no reason for me really not to. Now you microwave it until it's hot. People always ask me for times on the microwave. I don't know, you wait until it's warm. Stir it up every 30 seconds and test it out. I take that lime and I squeeze it over the beef and the rice, and then I mix everything together and eat it. I know I'm gonna get the question about why I don't just use glass meal prep containers, and the answer is because I don't like any of them. They're all either the wrong size or shape, or they have shitty lids. I've never found one that I actually like, and trust me, I've tried them all. There are some of them that are doable, but none of them are perfect. And I've been trying to manufacture a TMPM branded line of glass meal prep containers that have the correct size and shape since probably 2018. I've yet to find a single manufacturer that has given me a reasonable price, and that is why I am relegated to using the plastic and just moving over to a glass dish. The full written version for how you make this firecracker beef in Brussels is posted on my website, mealprepmanual.com, and that link is included in the description of this video below. If you decide to make this one, I'd love to see your recreation. Take a picture of it, send it to me on Instagram. You can tag me at the meal prep manual. I've got some exciting stuff planned for the next couple of months for you guys, but that's it for this week. I'll see you next time.